In light of your sudden rise in the world of cinema today, there's some controversy concerning your background that we'd like to clear up. Now, according to what I have here, you graduated rather unobtrusively from the Royal Film Academy, went on to study with Jean-Pierre Gascard for a few years, and then went to Hollywood, where you made three monumental pictures in less than two years. Is that correct? No, not exactly. Well, would you please clarify for us? I'm sure the audience is most curious. Well. I never graduated from the Royal Film Academy. You see, I started first working as an usher at the Ritz Theater in Cleveland. There I saved up enough money and I took a trip to Europe. Well, I was in London passing by the RFA one day and this guy comes running out of the building, you know, in a big huff and asks if I want a job in the, in the cinema. Well, I said, sure. Well, you can have mine, he says. So I took it. <laughs> he was a janitor. Well, then that led you to enrolling into the Academy. No, I never did take any classes there. I was only there a year. Hey, but I sure found out why the first guy quit. You know, they only got one storage closet for the whole building. The plumbing is in need of constant repair. The pay is lousy. Oh, man, they wouldn't even buy me a new mop and bucket. Have you ever seen a sound stage after a student film crew is done, finishing, working, and everything for 12 hours? Ugh. Man, they'd shoot till way late at night, and I'd have to stay up all night cleaning up. You know, with as much money as they're raking in off of those students, they could be doing a lot better than they've been. I bet you someone just takes the money and puts it in their pocket anyway. Well, surely you picked up some directing skills while at the Royal Academy. Nah. Yeah, I set in on a couple of directing classes, you know. But I never saw what anybody got out of them anyway. There's just always somebody down there blabbing on for hours about uh, motivational units or something like that, while the students are running a contest trying to figure out where he's driving so that they can answer intelligently. <laughs> After that, the actors and the directors and the technicians all go down and they play Hollywood on the stage. Well, then you pick up your directing skills from Jean-Pierre. Well, uh, now that's a different story. <laughs> yeah. After I quit the Academy, I was visiting in France, you know, where he was making his movie, The 400 Rows, you know, that oh, satire yeah. on corn farming? <laughs> yeah. Well, I was hanging around the set one day and he comes up with this idea and says he needs someone to drive a tractor. So I tell him I can. Well, did you see the film where this guy driving the tractor runs over this pig mm. while Mary Ann and Lester in the back kissing right. by the hay wagon? <laughs> that was me driving. I didn't know that was you. Yeah, sure. Well, I kept hanging around the set, you know, and I, I came up with the idea of the opening for the love scene where I dropped this big bale of hay on these little baby chicks just before Lester and Polly are in the love scene. <laughs> yeah, yeah. After I told him that, he really liked it. Well, that one was yours, too. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, sure. Hey, he really took a liking to me after that. We became real good buddies, you know. We went out carousing and drinking and messing <laughs> around. We were just like that. <laughs> well, hey, you know, he's, he's a regular guy. Yeah? I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, I, I hung around until he finished the film. Gave him a few more ideas. Well, like what? Well, he didn't know how to, to stage the, the death scene. You know, where Norton kills Stephen and Polly cries over the body? Mm -hmm. So I suggested that he shoot an extra scene with the two stallions fighting over the mare and Polly looking on. <laughs> oh, that one was yours? Yeah. Why, those are some of the greatest moments on the film. Yeah. Hey, now, now mind you, Jean-Pierre came up with some pretty good stuff. Uh, now and then. Yeah. He had a real problem, though, you know, pulling his actors through. He, he got too caught up in his own wisdom. Hey, a lot of times they were so confused, I'd have to go out on the set, straighten everything out before they could even shoot the scene. <laughs> you know, I think he was more interested on scoring with the leading lady than he was with directing. <laughs> but let's not get into that. <laughs> he really messed up a lot of good film, though, you know? by not paying attention and using these jump cuts. Uh, really bad one in 400 rows. That was a mistake? Yeah. That's one of the innovations the critics praised the most. I mean, that's become one of his most famous trademarks. Nah. Hey, he had a good publicity man, and he won him an Oscar for it. Well, how did you get to Hollywood? One drunken night, 
I got old Pierre to write me a letter of recommendation. He sent me on a plane to Hollywood. I got a job there working on a low, low budget film called Days of Sunshine. Right. Worked hard on it and got myself an Oscar. After that, work was easy. So you've had absolutely no formal training, yet you turn out such marvelous films. Yep, that's right. I just never got into all that jargon of visual aids or symbols or things like that. Yeah. No, no, wait a minute. Now, what about the shadow of the cross that falls on Joey in city streets as he's being stoned to death? Now, obviously, Joey represents the Christ figure in the uh, film with his shadow. You, uh... You notice that, huh? Well, of course, and thousands of other critics praised you for such subtlety. Well, uh, that was a mistake. You see, uh, what that was was two two-by-fours. We'd rigged them up earlier, you know, to set some lights on them. Well, they fell, the shadow fell into the fill light during the shot, and we were just hoping no one had noticed it, so we went ahead and kept it. That was a mistake. Yep. Well, it's lucky that it fit right into the Christ symbolism with Joy being the Christ figure in the play and in the movie that you made it. And what? Are you kidding? Man, the guy was a jerk. He was a complete washout. He never did a decent thing in the whole film. Now, wait a minute. Now, he was driven to violent acts by society, but, but he was lonely, oh, confused. Man. He was totally innocent. Look, I ought to know. I made the movie. All right. Sure. All right. He was mistreated. He was confused. Does that give him any reason to burn up a whole city street? Gee, the guy was a jerk, a drip, man. He deserved being stoned to death, society uh, bull. He I'm was sorry. a drip. I'm sorry. Um, now, how do you get such great performances out of your actors? You've obviously had little training. Do you, have you read Stanislavski? Hey, does he make movies? Forget it. Um, um, the basic thing that you got to do is you got to have taste, and you got to learn to communicate with your actors clearly. Well, then how do you communicate? In English. So you just sort of fell into this. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for being our guest this week. Hey, my pleasure. Don't mention it. As you can see, folks, truly a Cinderella story. <laughs> this is Clef Pallet signing off till next week. Ma, hey, it's your boy. <laughs>